After Hamas's sudden attack on October 7th, Israeli Prime Minister said Israel is at war. Israel responded with airstrikes, which are still ongoing. Recently, Israel added artillery fire in response as well. But the much bigger operation seems to be planned. On October 8th, intended mobilization of 300,000 reservists was announced. On October 9th, further blockade of Gaza Strip and the West Bank was either implemented or announced. By October 10th, further clarification on reservists' mobilization had the total figure climbed to 360,000. That's roughly 3.7% of Israel's population. If only Jewish nationals would be counted, it would represent 5% of the population. Though Arab nationals can and do serve in Israeli military in very small numbers. This video is not just about the numbers, it will explore what the offensive might look like. So stay tuned. Besides the Israeli reservists, we have to include the active military as well. Overall, Israel is just shy of 170,000 military personnel. Some 126,000 of that number are active army personnel. It's evident that the announced mobilization will leverage over three quarters of the entire reservist pool. But given the nature of the current conflict and the incoming offensive that Binkov believes is looming, it's likely almost all of those 360,000 are going to be army reservists. Now, such massive numbers of probably over 470,000 army troops may seem incredible. And indeed, if we were talking just about the Gaza Strip, they might be unneeded or constitute an overkill. The Gaza Strip is quite small. Area-wise, it's just twice the size of Washington DC, but it's got three and a half times more people living in it. What's more, Palestinian population in Gaza is very young on average. There are roughly 570,000 males between the age of 18 and 50 in Gaza Strip. Now Hamas, which governs Gaza Strip politically and has its own military force, can likely muster troops outside of that age and gender group. But for simplification's sake, planned mobilization numbers similar to Soviet World War II levels might be plausible. That's around 15% of male population for the start of the war. For the Gaza Strip, that translates to roughly 150,000 potential troops. Now, potential troops and actual troops are not the same. Izzadin al-Qassam brigades, the military wing of Hamas, have some active duty troops. Exact number is disputed. In 2007, the Israeli Ministry of Foreign Affairs estimated it at 30,000. Since then, various other estimates emerged sometimes going up to 50,000. Given the big attack Hamas did on October 7th, it's likely the Israeli response was expected. Plus, such big attacks are usually planned months in advance. So it's plausible Hamas military numbers have indeed risen higher, to possibly 50,000 or so, to try to deal with the Israeli response. But that was initially. Now, knowing that Israel is mobilizing a huge force, Hamas is also likely to be mobilizing as much as it can, as well. Whether that will be 150,000 in addition to the starting 50,000, that's harder to say. One also has to have a mobilization system in place to achieve a quick and well-organized mobilization. Israel has that, and showed it back in 1973, when it mobilized 400,000 reservist troops and had them ready to deploy within three or so days. It's not known if Hamas can do anything of the sort, but given the lack of evidence of annual mobilization exercises, given the lack of organized and mandatory military service in Gaza Strip, it's quite plausible that mobilization of further troops in Hamas will be slower and disorganized, composed of a bunch of people volunteering to fight, most without any serious military experience. Hamas active duty troops themselves aren't really well trained on the average. Western intelligence agencies estimated that the experienced corps of fighters was running at several hundred back in 2007. Since then, however, it's plausible additional troops with field experience in Syria or even troops being trained in Iran have been added, possibly raising the trained core of Hamas to a few thousand troops. Tens of thousands of remaining fighters have likely received varying levels of military training. Hamas does train its fighters within Gaza Strip itself, though it's impossible to say much about the quality of that training. On the other hand, Israel trains most of its population. Most of the citizens must serve for at least two years. 
During that time, they trained for four months, which is roughly analogous to US Army basic training. Once being sworn into the active duty force, they still continued their advanced training for another four to 12 months. In the end, the average Israeli conscript is likely to have much more thorough training than the average non-combat experienced Hamas fighter. Of course, there are also tens of thousands of Israeli troops with very recent combat experience as well. Now, all those army troops likely reaching 470,000 will go somewhere. They haven't been mobilized to just defend. The obvious task is the Gaza Strip. As Israeli leadership said it plans to wipe Hamas off the earth, that can't really be done without entering Gaza Strip. Airstrikes and artillery can't do it on their own. Hamas military will still hide in urban surroundings. If entering Gaza was not planned, Israel wouldn't have mobilized so many troops, as going for Iran is, in Binkov's opinion, out of the question at this point. But a ground force of some 470,000 is still an overkill for Gaza alone. Gaza Strip is tiny. It's 25 miles long and several miles wide. Despite its population density, it still has some open land. When we observe the map of its urban dwellings, it becomes obvious the urbanized area is even smaller and divided in urban clusters. Once the Israeli army is ready, with all its attack plans developed in detail and all the units deployed, it's likely to start its offensive. The big unknown is just how many weapons does Hamas military have? Some have wondered how come it has as many weapons as it has since Gaza Strip has been under a blockade for the last 17 years. But a long-standing game of cat and mouse has been played between Hamas and Israeli defenses. Hamas builds underground tunnels and Israel searches for them and destroys them. We are not talking about simple Viet Cong style dirt tunnels, but about fairly spacious tunnels with concrete walls and electricity, dug with professional tools. The Israeli military said some tunnels cost a few million dollars to construct. At 60 to 80 feet underground and sometimes running for a few miles in length, they are not so easy to detect, despite Israel creating underground anti-tunnel barriers and sensors around Gaza. It's also possible that the Egyptian border with Gaza is a bit more porous. It too has anti-tunnel barriers, but new tunnel detections might not be as thorough as ones done alongside the Israeli border. All that means that Hamas has been able to smuggle in a serious quantity of weapons, from rifles and grenades to larger items such as machine guns, RPGs and even high-end stuff like anti-tank guided missile systems and shoulder-launched anti-air missiles. How many of those does Hamas have? It's likely no one knows. But given the tunnel limitation, Hamas likely doesn't have larger systems. Still, there is plenty of other equipment it could have smuggled into Gaza, from night vision goggles and thermal sights to anti-personnel and even anti-tank mines. What's questionable is whether enough assault rifles could have been smuggled to equip 200,000 troops. So even if Hamas could theoretically field that many, it's questionable whether all those would actually be equipped, let alone get any sensible training in time. All that being said, it's still possible Israeli forces, when they enter Gaza Strip, may be looking at upwards of 50,000, possibly even approaching 100,000 enemy personnel, equipped with at least a rifle each. Gaza Strip is basically a series of single or two or three story dwellings. There is hardly a spot that's not overlooked by multiple windows from multiple directions, from no more than a few hundred yards out. That applies for the less urban parts. In larger settlements, there is virtually constant threat from all directions for any Israeli soldier. Actually bombing everything is not an option, not just because it would cause too many civilian casualties, but because that physically can't be done. And one can't really expect to level the ground. Some rubble will always remain, enough to provide cover to enemy troops just minutes after the explosion. Which is in part why Israel mobilized so many troops. Going from door to door is the only way to sweep through Gaza Strip. And with a massive advantage in manpower, Israel might be able to react better to any situation where Hamas might start to fire on Israeli troops. If Israel were to enter Gaza with just a few tens of thousands of troops, then it would likely have to rely on localized groups of troops, which might get semi-surrounded. But with this many troops on such a small area, Israel might be able to have its troops exposing a single side to the enemy. It's not just about incoming fire, but about possible threat directions. 
when you have to worry about just one quadrant, you are a more effective fighting force. Basically, the offensive might look like a giant noose around Gaza Strip that slowly squeezes around it. Besides the tunnels for smuggling, Hamas also relies on many defensive tunnels inside Gaza Strip itself, both for stashing weapons and supplies and for communications and troop movement. Such tunnels can complicate troop advance quite a bit. It's likely no one expects this offensive to be quick. It's possible that Israel will opt to rush ahead and separate Gaza Strip in several smaller areas. For example, break through to the sea and effectively cut off the city of Gaza in the north, then deal with separate areas one by one. Use of armor will likely be paramount to the Israelis. Yes, big armored vehicles are obvious targets, and many, many will get hit and destroyed. But in doing so, they will help protect Israeli infantry. The attackers will uncover their positions during attacks. The vehicles will draw fire onto them, which is sort of the point of armor in such urban fights, to protect the infantry around it, just as the infantry is there to protect the armor in turn. Going with only infantry or only armor would lead to much greater casualties. Israel has considerable intelligence gathering assets, and since the US has already pledged military aid, it is very likely Israel will get access to US sensor planes, satellite imagery and target processing capabilities. As Gaza Strip is small, it's likely Israel will be able to monitor much of it almost in real time. But monitoring of an urban area goes only so much. You still can't know who is in which building until they start shooting. So the average fight might look something like this. Hamas's suspected positions are pummeled by airstrikes and artillery. Israeli units move slowly into the Gaza Strip. A small number might suffer Hamas's mines. Some are fired upon. Israel reacts with either its direct fire support units, tanks or with artillery or air force strikes to level any building fire came from. Then the ground units move further to check if the area is truly clear of opponents. And that is repeated one building at a time, with of course only a small percentage of buildings actually housing Hamas fighters. As Hamas lacks intelligence assets and long-range fires, Israel will be able to fully utilize its artillery and air force and not worry about counter-strikes. As it goes deeper, Israel will detect more and more of the Hamas tunnels and seal them off. There are bound to be many casualties in this process and the entire war, but trying to predict how many would be futile at this point. A bloody war it will be, that's assured. At a certain point, the organized part of Hamas resistance is likely to break. Eventually, smaller and smaller resistance cells might fall apart and hide within the population. And then the second, much longer part of the operation will start, dealing with guerrilla warfare. Now, Israel doesn't have to go that far and clear everything in Gaza Strip. The future is not set. But given the Israeli statements, that does seem to be the goal. It's also a goal that Israel can attain. The cards are simply stacked in its favor. No matter how long it takes or how many casualties there are, Hamas seems outgunned and outnumbered, despite enjoying the advantage of urban terrain, defensive positions and knowing the surroundings. Now, 470,000 army troops is still really way too many for such an operation. If somehow one would try to place all those troops alongside the border with Gaza Strip, there would be like 8 soldiers per each yard. That's physically impossible to do. So a much smaller number will actually enter the Gaza Strip, with a sizable reserve being at hand to take place of a fallen soldier. But even that doesn't account for such massive mobilization figure. It's likely that Israel plans to use a fair chunk of its force to secure its rear areas all around Israel, as there are multiple potential threat axes to Israel, Hezbollah in Lebanon is as strong as Hamas militarily, usually thought to have between 50 to 100,000 fighters. Border with Syria always requires at least some Israeli troops to monitor it. The West Bank is rather large and there are 2.5 million Palestinians living there. An uprising is possible. Plus, the entire Israel requires extra troops for internal security during an operation like this. All those requirements will easily eat up over 200,000 troops, not counting the Gaza Strip offensive. If an operation in the West Bank is to be done, it's possible it will be done after the Gaza Strip is secured. Similarly, serious large war operations in Lebanon, if they happen, might happen later on. For now, 
The mass of Israeli force seems to be about security on all the fronts that aren't Gaza Strip, while a sizable force does enter the Strip. Benkov usually talks about hypothetical wars, but again, this video was not about one. One can only hope that peace will ultimately prevail, and hope it will bring us all closer.